Um, today's message is about living life without regrets. Um, today's sermon, which is titled "What If," um, today we're, we're going to look at uh, how focusing on the hypothetical in life can derail the path God has for you. It's kind of funny because the um, the message "What If" it kind of I, I wrote this this sermon like um, I don't know maybe like three or four, four weeks ago before all this stuff happened, and it kind of I don't know it just it just it, it's it applies to today. What if? All right, let's pray real quick. Um, dear God, I just pray that you anoint this message, God. Um, God, you 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 downloaded this message message to me, God, um, a while ago. And God, I just I feel like you just um, there was a reason for that. I just was obedient to you, and I'm just gonna I'm gonna preach what you told me to preach. Yes. And we thank you for everything in Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. All right. So as as, hum as humans, we have a tendency to look at things that we've done in life, good or bad, and this is called reminiscing. You guys reminisce? We reminisce about uh, good times, bad times. Um, if you pay, a uh, pay attention, you always hear people reminisce and talking about, you know, the old days or, the, or like just about things that they used to do. You know, you hang out with family and friends and uh, they like to talk about the past. So, you know, reminiscence is, uh, is it's a good thing. It's fun talking about memories. You know, I, t I see friends sometimes and uh, we talk about the old days. We know when I used to be more athletic and, you know, used to be able to play basketball, you know, eight hours a day. You know, but now I got a job. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's, it's fun talking, you know, about, um, you know, I have, my, I have a friend named Eric and we, we used to hang out all the time and play basketball in his driveway. You know, it was, it was fun. You know, however, however, at times when talking about those memories, there's work, there are words such as I should have or I would have. Or if I could go back, you know, these, these thoughts off the word of the mind with negative feelings and regrets. You know, not being able to turn back the hands of time is something that we all have in common. You know, hindsight is 2020. If we could, uh, we could go back and change the, the hands of time, I'm sure most of us would probably make a different choice. Most of us would, um, would um, wish we could take back some choices we made. Even yesterday, maybe. 10 years ago, 20 years ago. You know, we've all made some dumb choices, haven't we? We've all, we've all made choices um, that weren't the smartest. At the time, we thought they were smart, but we haven't, we, they're not always the smartest. You know, many, of, many times our memories lead us down the path of saying one of the most negative, thought-provoking expressions of all times. What if? You know, those two words are the seeds of spiritual bondage. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. You know, once they're planted, once, once the what if is planted, they cause people to build up walls in their heart and develop hatred and fear. You know, they can manifest and cause people to grow roots of resentment, bitterness, envy, rage, unforgiveness, vengeance, pride, self-hatred, and offense. That's just naming a few. Um, once you have made an agreement with any of these things in life, um, life is going to be altered. You're not going to be the same. You're not going to be the same. You know, one of the things I've, I've, I've learned in life is mistakes are going to happen. Is that true? Yeah, things are going to make mistakes are going to happen. I don't care if you I don't care if you're a Christian, you're not a Christian. If you think you, that you think that you're, uh, you know, right in a uh, right in a, a cloud, you know, you're the, you're the most holy of holiest. You're going to make mistakes. This is a given in life. You know, you can be you can love God and be a person after his heart like King David and still make a bad choice here or there. You know, King David, what they said in the Bible, he was a, 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 a person after God's own heart. You know, some people say, you know, how can that be? But he was. In the midst of all of this, where people, this is where people somehow, somehow, somewhere, somehow start living life with a calculated spirit. You know, having discernment is similar, but it's different. 
You know, discern, discernment gives you warning signs from God. God gives you like red flags. You know, don't do this. Don't, don't do this. Don't do that. However, however, a what if spirit is based on fear and unbelief and is not from God. You know, the, the, the what if spirit is rooted in fear and um, disbelief and doubt. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. It tells your mind that you better be guarded because if you're not, something might happen. You know, we know this is a lie and it's not it's not the truth. The first the first what if moment in history is in Genesis chapter three. And this is when sin entered the world. Genesis chapter three, verse one. Now this, oh, yeah, no, verse one. Now the snake was the most clever of all wild animals that um, the God had made. One day the snake spoke to the woman. He said, "Did God really say that you must not eat fruit from any tree in the garden?" What if? The woman answered the snake. We may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God told us you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden. You must not even touch it or you will die. But the snake, cunning, he came back, he, he, he came back and said to the woman, you will not die. God knows that if you eat the fruit from that tree, you will learn about good and evil. Then you will be like God. And the woman saw the tree was beautiful. And she saw that its fruit was good to eat yeah. and that it would make her wise. So she took some of its fruit and ate it. She also gave some of it, some of the fruit to her husband who was with her and he ate it. The sly and slick devil planted a seed of doubt and threw the what if scenario um, out to her. Yeah. First time, the first time somebody said what if. And look at what happened. Sin entered into the world. God gave her a word with a period. He gave her a word with a period. And the devil threw, up, threw it out and put in a question mark. When God gives you a word, you got to trust him and believe it. When God gives you a statement, you got to trust him and believe it. God doesn't give you questions. He's going to give you a statement. The devil is the one that's going to give you a, um, throw a question mark at the end. Just like you did with Eve. And you see what happened. We, now we have sin in the world. Because he didn't believe. Because the devil is so slick that he that he can sell. He'll be able to sell um, ice to an Eskimo. <laughs> He's so slick. The Bible makes it clear that we have to trust God if we're going to follow Him. And this is a this is a proverb. This is Proverbs three five through eight. And we, we, we've said this verse many times. It should be ingrained into our heads. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It will be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Amen. We are not to lean on our own understanding. Even though the, the human species is, is really smart, we have some really smart people with some really incredible brains. You know, we have lots of brain research and we have a lot of people that are incredibly smart. We had Einstein. You know, we have some people. But we cannot, we cannot, um, we cannot lean on our own understanding. You know, understanding, understanding can be experiences that we experience personally, emotions that we feel, behaviors, you know, etc. You know, they can be they can be positive or, or negative. They can make you happy or, or feel sad. They can cause you to cringe or jump in joy. This verse, the verse that I just read, the verses I just read, this they basically are saying you do not let your understanding cause you to take your own path based on your your situation or circumstances. Because we all we all have a tendency to do that sometimes. Sometimes we we look at um, we look at something and be like, you know what, we've done that before. And, and, and after that, you know, maybe, maybe, maybe that worked for us before, but after that, God has another path for us to take. Yeah, that's right. You know, many times our own understanding is not even on, on course with God's path. God's got you going here, you got yourself going way over here on the other side of town. Many times it's because we're letting the what if dictate our life, our path of life instead of God. 
We're saying, you know, God's told to give us, a, uh, give us a word, but he's like, what if? God, what if? Just like Eve. God said not to eat this and stuff, but the devil said, what if? What if you eat it? You know, let me tell you something. Um, the what if path of life leads you to a place called nowhere. How many have been? How many of you have been to nowhere before? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've been there many times, and it's not a fun place. It's dark and confusing. Yes. It's like being in a forest without a uh, compass. You don't know what direction you're going into. You don't know if you're going right, left. You're going south, north, east, or west. You're just walking around in circles. And this is a time that you're vulnerable. Because God knows, God, because the devil knows that he, he's got you right by the, right by the bottom. Right. Yeah. Yeah. He loves when people are in the wilderness. And we talk to people every day who are in the wilderness. They say, you know what, I really don't know what I should be doing. You know, I'm, I'm just, I, just, I just feel like life is just is, is going out of control, you know. Mm -hmm. And that's when the devil, the devil just says, you know what, I got you, kid. You know, and, he, and you're at your lowest point, and he's trying, he's trying to smash you and fill you with lies. You know, that's when you pick up all this baggage. Today, we're going to look at King Saul and see how he responded to the pressure of the what if. You know, King Saul was appointed, uh, was anointed and appointed Israel's first king. You know, that, that must have been a huge thing for King Saul. Israel's first king. You know, it, it was a privilege. It was a, it's a privilege to be Israel's first king. You know, he must have been high as a kite. He must have been very um, ecstatic. He must have been very happy. It's like God chose me. He could have chose everybody else, but he chose me. He chose you, you know. Amen. You know, that's the highest honor that you can ever receive is God choosing you. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's higher than any uh, award that you could uh, win. Or any any um, any anything that you can get on earth, it's it's, it's the highest honor. Amen. It's worth more than gold and silver because you can't take gold and silver with you. Right. You know, however, however, his kingship would be taken away from him fairly quickly. It, it wasn't that God made a mistake because God doesn't make mistakes. Yeah. It was because King Saul didn't position his heart towards God correctly. And this is true with our relationship with God or any or anybody or any or anything. If our heart is not positioned correctly towards uh, anything, it's going to go corrupt really bad. Amen. No, if we don't, if our heart isn't, isn't positioned, we're going to end up basing decisions on the what if, like King Saul did. So we're going to start with uh, 1 Samuel 15. We're going to read the first three verses of it. Samuel also, Samuel who, who also said to Saul, the Lord sent me to anoint you king over his people over Israel. Now therefore heed the voice of the words of the Lord. Thus says the Lord of hosts, I will punish Amalek for, Amalek for what he did to Israel, how he ambushed him on the way when he came up from Egypt. Now go and attack Amalek and utterly destroy all they have, made, all they have and do not spare them. But kill both man and woman, infant and nursing, child, ox and sheep, camel and donkey. He was giving direct orders from God to kill everybody. Yeah. Yes. It seems like to me, sometimes people would, you know, like, you know how people like to kill things. That would, you know, like, that, that would be, that some, for some people, that would just been just like, ooh. Destroy all the Am 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 Amalekites. It was specific instructions. Kill them, slaughter them, or whatever you want to say, blow them up. Let's read uh, verses 7 through 9 now. And Saul attacked the Amalekites from Havilah all the way to Shur, which is east of Egypt. He also took Agag, king of the Amalekites, alive and utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. But Saul and the people speared Agag, Agag and the best of the sheep, the oxen, the fatlings, the lambs and all that was good, and were un unwilling to utterly destroy them. But everything despised and worthless that they utterly destroyed. So anything, anything that they deemed worthless, they destroyed. So he did not listen to what God told him to do. 
He killed the majority. But when God tells you, when God gives you a word for a specific word, you got to be obedient to that specific word. If he tells you not to take the job and you do take the job, you're not being, you're not being obedient. Yeah. And we can all relate to this. Sometimes we want to do 99.9% .9 of what God tells us to do. And that 0.1% is what's going to kill you. Let's go on and read our verses 10 through 11. Now the word of the Lord came to Samuel saying, I greatly regret that I have set up Saul as king, for he has turned back from following me and has not performed my commandments. And it grieved Samuel and he cried out to the Lord all night. Man, that's, that's crazy. I can see that picture just crying and weeping. You know, so this is a sad passage. God had great things for, um, for Saul, but he didn't, he didn't do what he should have done. And I feel that's true for many of us sometimes. You know, not, not all of us, but some, some of us are in time, different times in our life. God has great things that we, he wants us to accomplish, but we just, we just haven't been obedient. You know, many have been called, but few have answered that call. You know, this grieves God tremendously when we, when we, don't, when we don't follow and we're not obedient to him. I can tell you right now, there's, there, there's some people that we come in contact with every day and we might, have, we might even know that have been, called from God, for, have been called by God to do great things, but they're not answering that call. Right. Let's read uh, um, passage, uh, verses 13 to 24. Then Samuel went to Saul, and Saul said to him, Blessed are you of the Lord. I have performed the commandment of the Lord. Hmm. But Samuel said, what then is this bleeding of the sheep in my ears and the, the lowing of the oxygen which I hear? Oxygen which I hear. And Saul said, they, they have brought them from the Malachites, for the people speared the best of the sheep and the oxen to sacrifice to the Lord, and the rest we have utterly destroyed. He said they. Who was he putting blame on? The people. He's not taking ownership. Amen. Then Samuel said to Saul, be quiet. I will tell you what the Lord said to me last night. He's basically saying, shut up. Listen to what I'm going to say to you. And he, and he said to him, speak on. So Samuel said, when you were little in your own eyes, you, were you not had of the tribes of Israel? And did, not the, did, and did not the Lord anoint you king over Israel? Now the Lord sent you on a mission and said, go utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them, and fight against them until they are consumed. Why then did you not obey the voice of the Lord? Why did you swoop down on a spoil and do evil in the sight of the Lord? Man, what can you say about that? Like when he just, what, what can you say when he says that to you? You didn't do what you're supposed to do. And Saul said to Samuel, but I have obeyed the voice of the Lord and gone on the mission on which the Lord sent me and brought back Agag, king of um, um, Malak. I have utterly destroyed the Amalekites, but the people took off the plunder, sheep and, the, and oxen, the best of the things which should have been utterly destroyed, to sacrifice to the Lord your God in Gilgal. So Samuel said, has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is, is better than sacrifice. Mm. To obey is better than sacrifice. And to heed than the fat of rams. For a rebellion is a sin of witchcraft. Rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. And stubbornness is, in an, is as iniquity and idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he's also rejected you from being king. He cut him off. Then Saul said to Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed, transgressed the commandment of the Lord in your words, because I feared the people and annoyed and, and obeyed the voice. He feared the people and obeyed their voice. He had the what if um, he had a what if moment. What are the people going to do? How are the people going to look at me? What are they going to think of me? Have you been there before? God tells you to pray for somebody but it's in a crowd of people. What if, what, what if the people look at me weird? What if God tells you to bless somebody? God, um, and you say, God, what if I need to buy something? What if my car breaks down? What if a bill comes up? What if, what if, what if, what if, what if? 
I'm being serious. It's what if, what if, what if? Saul said because of fear. The what if spirit got him. He got him. He got him. You know, Saul worried about people's opinions instead of being obedient to God. Sometimes like we do. Yes, it's normal to be aware of what people think about you, but it's also better to worry about what God thinks about you. Do you know anybody like this? We got pastors. We got pastors. We have we have people that you come in contact with. These people are so worried about offending others that they they, they keep the light in a bottle and don't let it shine. You know, you should, if you're you know if you're preaching the word of God, you don't have to you don't have to be like I'm sorry if I offend you. The the the, the, the gospel is offensive. I don't even have to, I don't have to offend because the gospel offends for me. It takes my place of offending. No, I'm just here to tell you, let your light shine. Amen. We ain't going to let Satan blow up. We're going to let it shine. Amen. 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 closing. The what of spirit which is the spirit of fear and doubt is real. However, Jesus died so we can have, we can live a life of victory. Victory over sickness. Victory over fear. Victory over anxiety. Victory over doubt. Victory over sin. And I want everybody to say this. Victory over the coronavirus. Second, Second Timothy one through one seven says, "For not for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. We can walk out these doors today knowing we're not going to be stupid about things. We're not going to we're going to we're going to listen to what the government says, but we we know that God's got our backs. We don't we can walk we can walk into Walmart and you know and, and know that God even if we do get the coronavirus, He's going to take care of us." We can even we can even shake people's hands if we if we if we choose to. We'll be okay. Is it wise? It's not wise, but I'm saying. But we know that God has our back. Amen. You know the, the spirit of God is in us, and we have the power of the Holy Spirit to overcome living life from a what if perspective. And this isn't in my notes right now, but God was telling me, he was telling me to share this verse right here, which we all know. This is um, uh, Matthew 9. Um, yeah, Matthew 9. 37. And I think this applies for us today. The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. God has been, telling, God has been putting this on my spirit a lot lately. Right now, is the, people's hearts are open right now. People are scared. People are walking around in anxiety. Right now, the, 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 the harvest has always been plentiful, but the harvest is a little bit more ripe right now. The harvest is a little bit more ripe right now. And like the fruit is, if we touch the fruit, it's fallen right off of it. And right now, people people right now are more prone to hear the gospel, to hear, Je to hear about Jesus and God and about this whole thing. And I just want I just I just want to encourage everybody to um, look for opportunities out there, co-workers, um, people that you see at the store that when you hear them talking, you know, tell them so you don't got to live in fear. You don't have to be scared all the time. You know, this coronavirus is real, but God is more real. All right, let's pray. Dear God, I just thank you for this message. God, I just pray that it just um, that it touched everybody here, God, and it'll touch maybe people that weren't that couldn't be here that, when they hear it, God. And I thank you for God just be, um, just being just being in our lives and just being who you are. And we thank you, God. God, we have your Bible to uh, 
to uh, guide us a life. And we know that we don't have to live in fear, God. Every, we're fine. We're, we have you, God, and you can you heal us and you touch us, God, and you um, you you guide us, God. And and we just thank you for that. And I just pray, God, like I said, about the the fruit, God. There's so many. There's so much fruit out there. The harvest. There's so much harvest out there that is just waiting to be um, fruit. This waiting to be harvested, God. And we, I just pray that we look for opportunities, and you give us opportunities this week where we can just share the gospel and just and just and get people out of darkness, God. And we thank you, thank you for everything that you're doing, and, and just this whole country, and just the whole the whole world globally.